Welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, software engineer and entrepreneur. And in this video, we will be learning how to use styles in Xamarin Forms. And the best way to illustrate styles is with examples. So here we have a content page, a Xamarin Forms content page, and then we have a stack layout, a container for three views. We have three buttons, three Xamarin Forms buttons. And as you can see here, we have set various properties. So we have set text color, border color, etc. And as you can see here, the values are, are the same for all these buttons. They share the same uh, theme. This is like a light theme we got we have going on here. And the values are, are repeated. So this is not a very efficient way to, to write code. This is uh, where we have duplicate code. We're repeating ourselves. It's all uh, hard coded in different places. And uh, let's say the business requirements change. Let's say the new business requirement says that we want a dark theme and we need to change all the colors and all and all these different properties of visual elements. Now, what do we have to do here? So we have to go to each, for example, button in this case, or each view that we have and manually change each of the properties. And, you know, it's all repeated and it's just a pain. It's not efficient and it's very easy to make a mistake. So styles are the solution to this problem. Styles allow us to define groups of properties just in one place in our application and then whenever we we need those groups of, of properties for a view, let's say this button, we just call it once instead of defining manually all these properties everywhere at once. So styles are used whenever you have different views that are sharing property values. So let's go right into it. So here in our content page we are going to, uh, to say content page Dot resources. We have our resources property. Our, these are these are called page level resources in our application. And then we are going to create a resource dictionary. This is basically key value pair uh, a dictionary where we are going to store our our style and the properties that, that, that we want. So we are going to create a style here. It's a class. And first of all, we need a key. This is how we are going to to. Uh, access this style from different parts of whenever we need it in the application we were we are going to use this key so in this case because we're using a, a buttons only for this is a simple example introductory example so we are going to call it button style and then we also need the target type so this is the the Xamarin forms type uh, of the view that are, that are that the style is going to be applied to and in this case again we, we have a button so that's the type let's go ahead and close the style and here, inside the, inside the style, we are going to start defining those, those, those properties. So we have setter uh, objects here, and the setters are going to be responsible for setting those properties. And as you can see, we have these two properties. One is called property, and the other is called value. So what is the property that we, that we want to define uh, here? So we, our buttons, as you can see here, we have text color, etc. So let's start with text color. And then we, we want the value. So what is the actual value here that we're using? We're using black. Again, this is a very simple video just to illustrate how we use styles. So we have that and setter. And look, we're defining, we're, we are going to define this only once instead of hard coding it uh, everywhere. So we want another setter here. What is the property now? So we have text color and we also have border color. The value is black as well. What's our next property? We have a border width. And what is the value? The value is one. Next property is background color. And what in the value is white. We are just repeating. It's the same thing we have here. We're just putting putting them in one place in one style object here. So we don't have to repeat repeat ourselves every time in, in code. And this will keep our XAML uh, smaller, more condensed, easier to maintain, easier to extend uh, going forward. So this is definitely best practice to create our, our styles here. And the last property we have is font attributes. And the value is bold. We want the text and the button to be, uh, to be bold. So here we have defined our style here in our resource dictionary in our um, at the page level here. So now we don't need all these properties here. We can actually go ahead and, and delete them. 
And now what we are going to do is uh, we have a style property here. And for the style, we are going to use a what we call a XAML markup extension. So we are going to open up curly braces here. And you see we have several uh, different uh, 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 things that we can we can use here so we're going to use a static resource because we have a we have a resource here that's statically defined and it's not going to be changing at, at runtime so for example if you had a a, th a light theme and a dark theme for your application and you were giving the user the option at runtime to switch between light and dark theme then you would want to use dynamic resource here markup extension but in this video just to keep it simple we are going to be using static resources where the theme or the these properties are not going to be changing at runtime so we're going to say static resource and here we just need the key and the key is button style and this is going to to go into this uh, resource dictionary here this style is going to to look up look it up by key it's going to identify as the the types are going to match and all these setters are going to set all those properties um, so very nice now we just have we just define a style instead of defining the properties all of them repeated. So you see the code is much clean, is much cleaner, it's easier to read. Uh, a developer that coming later into the code, you can come to the page and say, oh, okay, see, we have a resource dictionary. Um, in fact, actually, let's just go ahead and run it. And so we have a resource dictionary, we have the style defined there, and then each in the view, we just set the style property. And it's just, you see how much cleaner it is, how much easier to maintain. And let's say you want to change uh, these properties. Let's say you want to change from black to white, or again, you want to change these properties. You only change them once. You only change them in one place in the application here, and then automatically, all over, and everywhere you need them, uh, this is going to be updated at once. And look, we get the exact same thing we had before, but now the code is just easier to maintain, easier to extend, easier to read. It's just much cleaner, and um, this is definitely best practice um, to, to do this. Let's go, let go, let's go ahead and stop running. And just to illustrate real quick, let's actually just change here the font attributes from bold to italic. Let's go ahead and run. And what we would expect is the font attributes property for each of the buttons will be changed automatically here by just uh, changing it once. Again, we're not ha having to go to each button, to each property, change it manually, maybe make a mistake. We just have it in one place, change it, and boom. We have, it every we have the change applied everywhere we need it. And see, it's no longer bold, now it's italic text for our button. So very, very cool. Now, in this video, we are focusing on groups of properties. Here in your resource dictionary, you don't have to define a style necessary. You can define a color, for example, for if you only want one property, let's say just the background color or just the text color of the button. But in this video, because we're focusing on styles, groups of properties, this and this theming idea, we're going to be using groups of properties. So very cool. Now, these are, like I said, these are called page level resources, but let's say you have these buttons the buttons look the same in multiple pages in the application, not just in your main page, in your home page for your app, but let's say these buttons um, look the same in other uh, parts of the application. So in, what you can do here is instead of defining page level resources, you can define application level resources. So we have our, our app.xaml file here, and we you see for application, we have resources as well, and here we can define a resource dictionary. So what we are going to do is, we are going to move this style to our, uh, move it to the application level here. You know, always, of, always, of course, be careful with the with the copy paste. Just, I mean, of course, do it when you know exactly what's going on and what you're doing. So now we go ahead and run the application. Here, the static resource is, is going to, first of all, it's going to look it up locally in the page level resource. It's going to go to the dictionary. It's not going to find the key, then it's going to go to the parent, and it's going to keep going up until it finds this uh, this key, and it's going to find it until it hits the, uh, the application level resource dictionary. And as you can see, we get the, uh, the exact same thing, but now our style, all of these property values for our button are defined at the application level. So they are globally defined. And now you can, you can use this uh, static resource button style in different pages, not just this main page, but in different pages. And again, this makes the code uh, very easy uh, uh, to maintain as far as the UI, the, uh, the visual uh, properties. Uh, very easy to maintain, to extend, uh, to read, and just the code is much cleaner much, uh, and very, very well organized. So styles, very, very powerful um, uh, objects that we can, we can use here in Xamarin Forms. So thank you for watching. 
If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please leave them at the bottom. Also, hit the subscribe button below so you get notifications when new videos come out. And I will see you next time.